What's going on, my ASVAB party people? Anderson here, your ASVAB coach, and this is part four. If you haven't gone through parts one, two, and three of the mini practice test series, I definitely recommend doing that. That way you can see all the different types of arithmetic reasoning problems and see those solutions and get pointed out to more help. And so, in part four, we've got five more problems for you. I'm gonna review them extensively and show you exactly where you can get more practice, especially for those of you that are in my program. So we're about to get started, and so all I ask, only favor I ask of you, as always, is if you like the video, just make sure to click like. And at the end of the video, go ahead and comment anything interesting you saw, if you'd like to solve a problem a different way, or if you learned something new. I wanna go ahead and get your feedback on every single video, that way we can keep getting better just for you. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Let's crush these five problems in this video and have a good time. Let's ace the ASVAB. Problem number one. So we have this problem here. Feel free to pause it. That way you can try it out yourself and then press play when you're ready. But let's go ahead and tackle this. I'm gonna show you that if you found a way to do it that felt particularly long, I can actually show you a much faster way to think about this and get it done. So here we go. Number one, it says, hey, uh, psh, first step is what's the question? What day will it be 51 days from now? Okay, that's a pretty sincere question, right? Pretty simple, straightforward, and you're not wrong. So we're asking what day will it be 51 days from now? And we see that we are starting on Wednesday. So one of the temptations that you might be going through is, hey, let's start on Wednesday and let's count 51 days. But here's the thing, my party people, this is an example of a modulus question or a remainder question. If you know about remainders and you're pretty comfortable with the idea, this is actually gonna be pretty straightforward. So let me go ahead and show you here. So here's the thing. Again, today is Wednesday and we wanna know, hey, what day will it be 51 days from now? Well, what do we know about weeks? Weeks are seven days long. So if you think about it, every seven days, we're on the same exact day. If today's Wednesday, hey, seven days from now is gonna be Wednesday. 14 days from now, so another seven days, still Wednesday. So if you think about it, well, what's the closest multiple of seven that can get as close as we can to 51? Because if we can get close to 51, we can avoid all of the one, two, three, four, five. Instead, count by sevens and see if you can get close to 51. This is a very quick way to do it. Because again, seven days from now, 14, 21, 28, 35, that's ugly handwriting, 42, 49, each of those days from now are all gonna be Wednesday. So on day 49, that's gonna be Wednesday. We want 51, well, 50 is gonna be Thursday, 51 would be Friday. And there it is, very straightforward, very quick. And hopefully you see this as, oh wow, there are other problems like this. It's not just about the days of the week. There could be plenty of other examples. And so if you're in my program, just wanted to go ahead and point out real quick where to find more practice just like this. So what you're gonna do, let me go ahead and show you my screen right behind me. This is gonna be the arithmetic reasoning dashboard. So again, if you're on the website and you have the program, boom, this is what you'll see when you click arithmetic reasoning. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna kindly go ahead and scroll right down, right over here to unit one, general word problems. So when you click on general word problems, you'll see that you can go ahead and click right there to start with the learning strategies and study guides, or when you're ready to take that unit one checkpoint, that speed drill to see if you've mastered it, boom, click right there and you're good. So again, this first problem was unit one. Want to make sure you know that, that way as we go into the next problem, hey, we see that, okay, that's this unit, that's this unit, and we can get that practice in nice and easy. So without further ado, let's go ahead and move forward here into question number two. All right, here's question number two, and this one is definitely not as easy as the first one. So again, pause the video, give it a shot, and then we'll go ahead and review this together. So hopefully you've had a chance to again pause it, because here we go. Again, first things first, I don't care how long the problem is, we wanna read the question first. So, right over here, we see that it says, hey, how long would it take Andrew and Carol to complete the task if they worked together? So instantly, when you see these phrases together, when you see, hey, how long will it take this person and this person working together? 
Well, you're asking for a time period. How long will it take? How long will it take two people to do something together? Now, here's how you know that this is going to be a very unique type of problem. This is a combined work problem. Okay. This is a combined work problem and this is a pretty advanced problem, but pay attention because I'm going to show you how to exactly to get this done. So we have Andrew and we have Carol and we're looking for time to complete the work together, completing the work together, time to complete the work together. Again, that's how you know this is going to be a combined work problem. And here's exactly how you set it up. The way that you set up a combined work problem is going to be, Hey, look, one over the time it takes person a plus one over the time it takes person B is equal to the one over T and T is the time that it takes them together. So I know this looks a little funky and weird, but this is the thing about understanding combined work. We can't combine their times. We can't say time for Carol and time for Andrew added together equals time together. That doesn't make sense at all because think about it. If it takes me five minutes to do something and it takes you, let's say seven minutes to do something. If I said, Hey, how long does it take us to work together? Well, if it takes me five minutes and it takes you 12 minutes, if you add those, you get 12 minutes. Why would it take us longer to do something together than it does individually? doesn't make sense, right? And that's why we're using the reciprocal here. These are basically representing their rates. These are their rates actually, because we're saying, Hey, in one hour, person a or Andrew gets one over a of the work done. So one eighth or a with a th there with Carol here in one hour, she'll get one over that, that amount of time. And then to working together, it'll be one over T. Now that doesn't make too much sense. Again, what you want to do is you want to go into the arithmetic reasoning dashboard and you're actually going to be going into section 13, section 13. And that's going to show you all of these advanced type work problems. So let's go and get to it here. We need to know, Hey, how much time does Andrew take by himself? How much time does Carol take by herself? And then all we got to do is plug this in and solve this. It's actually very straightforward. Watch this. Andrew, we see he can complete the task in 40 minutes. So we'll go ahead and write that right there. And then for Carol, she can finish the task over here in 50 minutes by herself. So that's all we need. Once we've identified that this is a combined work problem, all we're going to do is set it up just like this one over 40 for Andrew plus one over, and it's going to be 50 for Carol. We're going to solve this equation, solve for T and that's going to give us boom right there. That's going to give us the time it takes them together. So here we go. How are we supposed to combine these? Well, this is just, you know, basic fraction knowledge. You should have enough practice to know this. All we're going to do is find a way to combine these fractions and we need the same denominator. So we have to ask ourselves, what do 40 and 50, those denominators, what do they have in common? Well, 40 and 50 can both go into, well, they can both go into 200. So what I'll do is over here on the left, I'll multiply this by five over five. And then I'll multiply this one over here on the right side. I'll multiply this by four over four, because at the end of the day, five times one will be five, five times 40 would be 200. And then one times four is four and 50 times four is 200. And that's still going to equal one over T lastly, or up next, we'll go ahead and combine those fractions like we wanted to before. So that's going to give us nine over 200 equals one over T. Now that we're here, we can go ahead and solve this by very simply looking that we're going for T and because we're going for T and it's in the denominator. Well, if we wanted to put it in the numerator, we can actually just flip both fractions. We can take the reciprocal of both sides. Nice and easy. So if I do that, if I take the reciprocal of both sides, again, what I'll be doing here, it'll be looking like that. And so we'll get 200 over nine equals T. And so there it is. There's our answer, but let's see if we have to do any more work. Let's look at the choices here. Yeah, we definitely, uh, definitely need to go ahead and actually divide because none of these actually say 200 over nine. So once we go ahead and divide nine into 200, what we'll have is, Hey, nine goes into 20 twice, subtract the 18. And then nine goes into 20 here twice. And we see that we're going to have a repeating decimal. We see that it's going to continue repeating and repeating forever because there's only going to be twos as the remainders. 
So we'll go ahead and just write 22.2 repeating, which the nearest whole number, nearest whole number is going to be 22. So the answer for the second one here will be C. Now again, this is a combined work problem. And again, the way that you're gonna find your arithmetic reasoning dashboard is right over here. So what you're gonna do is when you log into the website or you look at your program checklist, all you have to do is go to section three for math. This is section three. So again, your program checklist covers how to access the classes, how to get all the recordings, how to start learning math, English, and all that stuff, right? So when you go to the section three for math, all you gotta do, go right over here to arithmetic reasoning, bam, click that picture right there with my ugly old face, and it'll take you again to the dashboard that we're looking at now. And what we're looking at right now is again, unit 13, advanced word problems, combined work right there. And boom, and you're all set. So that's it for question number two. So again, I'm wondering, you know, was this question surprising to you? Because we're gonna go into question number three now, and I wanna see how much better and how much more exciting this can get. Let's go and get to it. I'll see you in the next one. Number three. So in this one, we're dealing with a geometry word problem, specifically circles. So let's write that down here. We're dealing with a circle word problem. Boom, right there. And so before I even begin the problem, let me just go ahead and show you where you can actually practice speed drills. If you don't know what a speed drill is, this is gonna be amazing for you because a speed drill is basically, you have an unlimited set of problems for a specific topic and you can retake it over and over and over again. And every single problem is gonna have a written step-by-step -step solution for you. That way you can practice with confidence knowing that if you're at least somewhat knowledgeable on the topic, you can continue getting better because you'll see exactly what mistakes you're making along the way. So to find a speed drill, just go ahead and take a look behind me. This is unit nine for circles, okay? This is unit nine for circle word problems. And to do the checkpoint, the speed drill, it's right there. Once you click that, what you're gonna see right over here, when you click that, let me go ahead and open it up over here through this. But what you're gonna do is you're gonna scroll over here on the left, unit nine checkpoint circle word problems, and right behind me, you'll see the checkpoint getting ready to get started. So like I told you, what you're gonna have is an unlimited set of problems, just like this. Different problems, and they're gonna be labeled for you, um, and they're all gonna be different. And once you're done, you can go ahead and submit, hit feedback report, and look at this. Look at how awesome this is. You're gonna have the problem, the correct answer given to you, and again, the step-by-step -step solution. Nice and easy. And that's gonna be for every single problem. So don't waste time. Again, for those of you that are in my program, that's over 60% of you watching my YouTube videos, which is awesome. I wanna make sure that you know that there's way more, a ton more help for you. So don't hesitate. Make sure to continue practicing after this video. But with that said, let's go ahead and get back into this problem here. I'm gonna show you how smooth a problem this difficult, seeming, seemingly difficult, we can show you exactly how to get this done. So first up is, what's the question? What's the circumference of the circle? So instantly, the moment that you see a pure math word that has a formula behind it, bam, you gotta be able to regurgitate that formula instantly. And that's exactly what I'll do. When I'm talking about the circumference of a circle, what I want, well, there are two formulas for it. We have circumference equals two pi r, or we can use circumference equals pi times the diameter. And remember, both of those formulas are the exact same thing. So don't freak out when you're wondering, hey, which formula do I use, coach? Because remember, these are the same formula. You should understand that. Because remember, double the radius or two times r, that is the diameter. Don't forget that. Don't forget that. And I got plenty of lessons for you on that, like I said in the program. But yeah, make sure you have that down. And so with that said, boom, let's figure out which formula we should use by first understanding the information we have. Do they give us the radius? Do they give us the diameter? Which one is it? But what I see here is, hey, oh, neither actually. I'm given the area. Okay. So is it possible to go from the area to the circumference? Absolutely. It's absolutely possible. Remember, what you need to understand is that when it comes to area and perimeter, you can translate from one to the other because in the middle, in the middle, you'll have the dimensions. So if we're talking about a square, well, if you have the perimeter and the area, from the perimeter, you can get the side, and from the side, you can get the area. If you're talking about a circle, let's say we're starting with the area, trying to get to the circumference. Well, remember, the area formula, right over here, for a circle is pi 
r squared. So we're given, we're given the area right there, 49 pi. So we can use this to find the radius. And once we have the radius, we can plug it back in. So think about that plan before we do any math, before we get into the crazy numbers. Does that make sense to you? Again, leave a comment. Let me know if this is making sense because I really want to make sure that you understand that not every problem is one step. Let's get into it here. So again, the area that I'm given is going to be 49 pi. And that's going to be equal to, again, pi r squared. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and solve this by first dividing pi on both sides. Because both sides are being multiplied by pi, if I divide pi on both sides, it just cancels out. It's nice and easy. So what's left is 49 equals r squared. And what I'll do is I'll take the square root of both sides, which is the same thing as saying, hey, what number multiplied by itself gives me that number inside? And that's going to be 7. 7 times 7 is 49. So r is 7. But we're not done yet. Now that we have the radius, like we said, we can now go ahead and plug it back into the circumference formula and get our final answer. And so with that, booyah, my circumference is going to be equal to 2 times pi times 7. And so 2 times 7, that's going to be 14. And my answer will be 14 pi. And that's going to be choice B. And there you have that. So again, I'm really hoping that this is at the very least interesting to you to see that, yeah, I know this problem is two sentences long, but it can be rather difficult. So again, let me know, is this helping you out so far? And let's go ahead and dive into question number four. Man, if there's any problem so far that's gonna be well worth this entire video, it's this one right here. This one is gonna be all about an advanced word problem that deals with percentages, but it's called a mixture problem. Now, this is a very common problem when it comes to chemistry and scientific research when you're just mixing solutions. And so I want to introduce you to this problem to show you that this is, again, very, very, very doable and make sure that you know why it makes sense. So here we go. First steps first, no matter what, read that question. No matter how crazy a problem might seem, start with a question. So right here it says, what is the oil concentration of the 100 milliliter solution? Okay, what's the oil concentration? If we look at the answer choices, looks like we're dealing with percentages. Percent, 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 percent. Okay, sounds good. So we're looking for the percent concentration of the solution that's oil. Okay, cool. Now, if I'm gonna write that, well, they give me the amount of stuff that we have. It's 100 milliliters of this entire solution, and we wanna know what percentage of it is oil. So let me go ahead and write this down here. Step one, I want blank percent of the 100 milliliters is again oil blank percent of the 100 milliliter solution is oil so we're trying to basically fill in that blank we want to complete the sentence what's that percent of this 100 milliliter solution that is oil now let's look at the information we have to see exactly how we're going to set this up and so before i continue remember comment on this video let me know which problem was the hardest for you so far this is number four but if it's going to be the next one i don't you know let me know i want to know which one you guys found the easiest and the hardest that way we can continue this conversation here so number two again what information do we have well here's what it says it says a 100 milliliter solution is mixed with a 60 milliliter solution to create a mixture that is 37.5 percent oil Oh, okay. So again, where we have this one solution that's 100 milliliters, and we want to know the percent of it that's oil. What we have is, hey, this 100 milliliters is mixed with a 60 milliliter solution. So this is actually very interesting, and this is how we're going to set this up. 100 milliliters mixed with mixed with 60 milliliters. And the result, the result, let me go ahead and move this all over here. Let me move this all because I'm going to need all the space I, I can get. So 100 milliliters mixed with 60 milliliters is going to equal, let me use blue here, is going to equal a 37.5% oil mixture. But really 100 milliliters 
plus 60 milliliters is 160 milliliters. Now, what I'm going to do underneath it is I'm going to write the percentages that we have. Here are the percentages we have. The percentages that we have are this. The 100 milliliters, well, we don't know what it is. That's what we're trying to figure out. And then over here, the 60 milliliters, we're told that it's 50% oil. So that's 50% oil. And then the 160 milliliter solution. So both of them combined. Once we combine these mixtures, these solutions, the mixture that we get, we're told it's 37.5% oil. So with that said, how do we set this up again? Well, basically, if we're trying to talk about this in terms of just the oil that we have, what we are going to have is this. Essentially, the oil in the 100 milliliter solution plus the oil in the 60 milliliter solution is going to equal the oil in the 160 milliliter mixture. So the oil from one plus the oil from the next, when you combine them, you have the oil for them together. Hopefully that makes sense in a broad sense. Here's how you show it with an equation. So let's go ahead and say the percent that we're looking at. I'm just going to say, you know, P, P 4%. And here's how we do this. The 100 milliliters, again, that's P percent. P percent times the 100 milliliters. And then we're going to mix it with, and I'm going to use purple for this one. So we're going to add this with 50% times the 60 milliliters. And then the last one I'll use green. The total mixture together is going to be 37.5% of or multiplied by the 160. So 37.5 times the 160. And so if we solve this equation, we're good. Now it seems crazy, right? It seems like we're we're trying to do a lot of work, but it's just because there's decimals in there. We're dealing with percentages. Once we actually have it set up properly, the solution's actually pretty straightforward. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and rewrite this now with the percentages written as decimals and then solve the equation. So here we go. P percent times 100 milliliters. Well, to turn a percent to a decimal, we divide it by 100. So we're gonna have P divided by 100 times the 100 milliliters then 50% as a decimal divide by 100 or move that decimal place over two times, we're gonna have 0 0.5 times 60. And then the 37.5, that percent is gonna be 0 0.375. And that's gonna be times 160. Now we're gonna simplify a little bit, brush up here and solve. So what we have is, hey, well, 100 divided by 100 is gonna cancel out. So we're gonna have P plus 0 0.5 times 60. 0 0.5 is the same thing as multiplying by half. So that's going to be half of 60, which is 30, P plus 30, equals whatever 0 0.375 times 160 is. So if I zoom on in and kind of just solve that for us, here's what we're going to have. So 375 times 160. So here's, here we go. 5 times 0, that's going to end up being 0, 0, and 0. Next line. Then we have seven times zero, or excuse me, five times six, that's gonna be 30. Seven times six is 42, carry the three is 45. And then three times six is 18, carry the four is 22. So then the next line, we're gonna go ahead and do five times one, seven times one, and three times one. So once we have all of that, I know it seems like a lot more party people, but it's all good, because now we have the answer. Boom, 10 again, and that's gonna be six. And we use those decimal places to bring back three times, one, two, and three. Boom. And so we end up having 60 as that right side. So P plus 30 equals 60 is where we have ended up at this point. Notice how all of this just turned into something very, very, very doable. And so from here, we'll subtract 30 from both sides and we are done. Boom. Cancels out. And so we get P equals 30%. So that 100 milliliter, solu milliliter solution, excuse me, that was again, 30% oil. And we have solved it and we're good. Boom. And so if you wanna learn more about this and how this actually works, again, this is gonna be in unit 13. Unit 13 for arithmetic reasoning. 
advanced word problems. That's where you're going to find this. That's where you're going to find your the next problem that you're going to see with rates and a system of equations set up. And you're also going to see other problems like, well, I'll let you go in there and find them. So without you know, really wasting more time, let's go ahead and get into problem number five. All right, welcome in to question number five. My party people, it's the last one. Hopefully you've been having a good time so far. As always, pause the video. Pause the video to see if you can try this problem out and get it right. But just remember, any problem that you've tried so far that you were still confused on, don't think of that as a condemnation of your ability to pass the ASVAB. You're still able to pass it. Just because you can't do one problem right now doesn't mean you can't learn it later. So remember, understanding what these topics are, if you're struggling with them, that's the best way to give yourself the opportunity to learn later. I got your back. So question number five, again, start with the question. What are we looking for? So right over here, it says, hey, how long is it until the event is set to start? Okay, so we're looking for the time until the event starts. Sounds good. Sounds good. Blank, and it says hours here for all of the answer choices. So I'll just say hours. So we're looking for blank hours until the event starts. Okay, sounds good. Now let's see how crazy this problem is going to get because this is actually going to be a rate work problem mixed with dis or excuse me mixed with a system of equations. So rates and systems, this is going to get ugly because both of those are pretty hard. But I want to again remind you, this is also going to be unit 13 of the arithmetic reasoning. So right over here, if we look behind me, let me just go ahead and go back to the dashboard. Again, unit 13, advanced word problems, combined work, mixture. All, so I've basically gone over three problems from unit 13 in just this video. So make sure to get in there. And again, if you're not in the program, you can easily get the program by clicking the link in the description of this video or going to that link right there, asvab.info slash prep. And as a reminder, you can text me if you have any questions about how the program works or if you need me to walk you through anything or need help. I got you. So here's my number again, 567-698-8867. Feel free to text me. It's a text only line and I'll make sure to reply as soon as I can. Okay, so here we go. We're looking for the number of hours until the event is set to start. And what we're going to see next is, well, what's the information that we're given? Well, the information that we're given is this. Let's read through it. So Daniel is driving to an event that starts at a certain time. He knows that if he drives at 70 miles per hour, he'll arrive one hour early. However, if he drives at 50 mi 55 miles per hour, he'll arrive two hours late. How long is it until the event is set to start? Well, here's the thing that we know. We know that what Daniel is giving us is that he's driving at a certain speed and he'll arrive at a certain time. Speed, which is a rate, time period, rate and time. This is a distance rate time problem, but notice that you have two separate rates, two different time references, but it's the same distance. And that's gonna be very useful to us in just a few moments. So number two for the information we're collecting, let me highlight the first one in green. He knows that if he drives at 70 miles per hour, he'll arrive one hour early. Let's go ahead and say that Again, the distance is D, so distance to the event. And then let's say that T is the, you know, how, for how long we have until the event starts. Because again, T hours until the event starts. So we'll say that T is time until event starts. This is gonna be super important because if you know how to set up equations and system of equations, then you're gonna see why this is so important. And if again, you're struggling with this, then systems of equations is the topic that you wanna review in the arithmetic reasoning course. So here's where we're gonna do it. In green, it says if he drives at 70 miles per hour, so distance equals rate, which is 70 miles per hour, he'll arrive one hour early. What does that mean? Well, if he's gonna be arriving one hour early, that means he's gonna be there one hour before the event starts. So instead of saying 70 times time, it's actually gonna be 70 times time minus one, T minus one. It's not gonna be T hours at 70 miles an hour. It's gonna be T minus one hours because he's gonna arrive one hour early. Does that make sense? Because guess what? We're gonna set up another equation now 
and we're going to use the fact that we're told that, hey, if he drives at 55 miles per hour, he'll get there two hours late. Here's how that looks. The distance, again, it's the same distance, same distance. He's just pondering, hey, at 70 miles per hour, I'll get there at this time. 55 miles per hour, he'll get there two hours late. So remember, T represents the time until the event starts. So if he's two hours late, that's two hours on top of that driving time or that time until the event starts. So here that would be T plus two. Hmm. So once we have set this up, check this out. Let's make sense out of this. Again, to, to drive that distance, if he goes at 70 miles per hour, he'll take one hour less than needed. If we're, dry, or if we're trying to get that distance, the same distance at 55 miles per hour, well, we're gonna be two hours late. We'll add on two hours to the time we need to get there. So, boom. With that said, guess what? What did I say earlier? These distances are the same. Either scenario, we're driving on the same road, same route, same distance, and what we can do is we can treat this like a system of equations and solve this for T. We're looking for the time that the event is gonna to take to start. How long from now will it start? So, since these are the same distance, we can set these equations equal to each other. We can set these equal to each other. So the way that we're gonna show that is gonna be 70 multiplied by T minus one equals 55 times T plus two. Boom, just like that. And once we have this set up, we're gonna go ahead and solve this and we're good. Here we go. So first things first, we're gonna go ahead and distribute the 70 into both of these. And we can distribute the 55 into both of these to get rid of that parentheses. So 70 times T is 70 T. 70 times negative one is minus 70. This is gonna equal on the right side, 55 times T, which is 55 T. 55 times two is gonna be 110. Now, what we're gonna do is, well, hey, we have a variable on each side, let's get them on one side. So let's go ahead and continue by subtracting 55 T from both sides right there. And what we have is 70 minus 55, and that's gonna end up being 15. So we have 15 T. And then what we can do, since this is now canceled, we only have the 110 left, but we have a negative 70 here. So another thing I can do is I can add 70 to both sides to cancel that out and do 110 plus 70, which is 180. Now, the last thing I'm set to do is divide both sides by 15 and I am set. So that's exactly what I'll do. Divide both sides by 15. And if you wanted to, you know, you could go ahead and do your long division or you can use a mental math technique to, instead of divide by 15, you can divide by, well, three and then five because three times five is 15. So if you're dividing by 15, you can divide by three and divide by five and get the same result. So if I divide by three at first, let me go ahead and write this over here. T equals 180 over 15. If I divide by the three first, well, what I'm gonna get is gonna be T equals 60 over five. And then, well, 60 over five is actually a lot easier because that's gonna end up being T equals 12. Boom. So it looks like our friend Daniel is gonna be driving for 12 hours to this event. No wonder he was actually pondering, hey, at these speeds, how long will it take me? That's a good question to ask. And that's gonna be again, 12 hours after we solve this entire system. And that's answer choice A. And there we have it. So stick around, let me go ahead and really recap this for you in a moment. That way you can understand how far you've come, where you can go to continue learning, and how to continue building that confidence. Let's go ahead and recap real quick. Bam, right there. So <laughs> with that said, my party people, I really hope you enjoyed this. Now understand that these problems were a little more challenging than parts one, two, and three of my practice test series. So remember to go back, review those, like those videos, comment on them. That way you can continue just assessing where you currently are. And on top of that, if you wanna learn more about raising your score and passing the ASVAB, there's the website right there. I'm gonna have a full program that my students use to raise their scores and get the jobs they want. And I wanna support you all the way until you pass. That way, you can get the job you want and the career you deserve and serve our country. So, if you have any questions about party people, again, my name is Coach Anderson, and as always, love y'all.
Make sure to leave a comment on this video, letting me know what you learned, what you appreciated, what frustrated you, and I'll see you in the next one.